Dr. Marshall, it's great to see you. Thank you for joining me in part of our Biofuel Champion video series. Uh, I was just on video with you a few weeks ago as part of the Biofuels Caucus Town Hall. I thought that was a great evening. Thank you for hosting that. Um, I'm gonna start with just a very broad question for you. Why is supporting biofuels and the Kansas farmers so important for you? Yeah, Emily, well, thanks for having me and thanks for all Growth Energy does for my farmers back home, as well as the ethanol and biofuels industry. And to me, it's really the same thing. And that would be my answer. Look, I grew up in agriculture. 40% of Kansas economy is dependent upon agriculture as well. And 20% of the corn crop in Kansas goes to, uh, goes to an ethanol plant in Kansas somewhere. I see right now uh, the great opportunities with biodiesel, lots of biodiesel plants being opened up, a great opportunity for our soybean industry. A lot of our milo we grow in Kansas goes to an ethanol uh, plant as well. But beyond that, I tell you what, where my heart really is uh, with, the, with the biofuels industry is across Kansas, I believe we have 11 uh, particular uh, plants of one sort or another. And in every community, they're a small community, but they're so important. They're typically the major employer in town. Uh, the people that usually started these were people that I'd met back when I was Rotary District Governor, believe it or not. And they were folks that were trying to help their community survive, this value add, growing jobs to help rural America survive. So the people, the culture, of the folks that run those plants and involved in, in our industry are just some incredible people trying to do the right things for their community. You've had the opportunity to travel across much of Kansas this summer, and I think stop in at a few biofuel plants. Tell me in the conversations that you're having, what are some of the issues that are most top of mind for the members of our industry? Well, I, I think it's how do we sell more and more of our biofuels, right? So as COVID hit and, the, and people stopped traveling, we saw the bottom fall out of our market as well. Uh, so, you know, the question is, how do we safely, responsibly get the economy going again so we have a market for our product? And, and then beyond that, maybe it was how do we work with the Paycheck Protection Program? A lot of folks have used that as well. Uh, what do we need to do to protect our employees and protect our customers as well? And then, of course, you know, there's always some new uh, surprise in Washington, D.C., and we thought we'd made some progress uh, on the small refinery exemptions, and then uh, the EPA pulled out a new trick on us. So, you know, we kind of take a step forward and then two steps backward. We got E15 year around and they did the small refinery exemptions. We get them stopped and now they're doing these, um, we, we could even the name of some 52 week checkoff or something. So it's always something in DC. Let's talk about that little something in, in DC. Yeah. <laughs> as as co-chair of the Congressional Biofuels Caucus, you led along with 31 of your bipartisan house colleagues, a letter to the president urging him to reject these new 52 gap year small gap years. exemption applications, right? It's the right. latest thing in Washington. Tell me why addressing exemptions once and for all is so important for farmers and for biofuel producers. Well, certainty. If you would ask every business person, uh, be good rules, bad rules, okay, but give me certainty. So 15 billion gallons should mean 15 billion gallons. And I don't care personally how they get there, but they can't keep finding exemptions and go underneath those numbers. So uh, otherwise, um, you know, my plan in Phillipsburg, Kansas, or, or uh, where, where they, in liberal Kansas, they don't know what to do in Lyons, Kansas. So, so we need 15 billion gallons means 15 billion gallons. This is the latest trick. Uh, and you know, trying to just delay that certainty. So it's pretty frustrating. You cannot run a business when you have this much uncertainty going on. Before my last question, I wanna thank you for being such an impactful and vocal and vociferous champion for us at every turn in every one of these latest gimmicks that's coming up in Washington, yeah. like 52 uh, gap year. SREs, you've been there fighting for us. And so I appreciate it. With that in mind, in a few short months, we're gonna be having our annual biofuel summit. We'll be doing it virtually this year, mid-September in Washington. And tell me why it's so important for you to hear from our members, our producers, our supporters, your constituents. Well, Emily, I'm one voice out of 435 House members, and there's another 100 senators. And then there's the, the executive branch as well. 
So I need everybody uh, working on with their Congress member and their staff. Don't forget their staff. This, these decisions all start at the staff level. Get some of their staff members to come out and visit your biofuel plants. Uh, meet some of the people that work for you. See what great people they are and help them understand why this is so important to agriculture as well. You know, the last time I was with the president, every time I'm with the president, he says, Roger, tell your farmers that I love them which is great, but we need to make sure the president needs to understand that biofuels and agriculture are the same, that this is, a, this is a great value add for agriculture. So anyway, I need all your members communicating with, with your Congress members uh, ac across the country, Democrat, Republican, uh, biofuel, ethanol is not a Democrat or a Republican, I don't think, same way uh, with the biodiesel. So we need uh, just this communication. We need to be sharing the eth ethanol biofuel story. Look, it's a great story to share. It's uh, less dollars per, per gallon at the pump. It has a smaller carbon footprint. It gives us better gas mileage. I mean, that's what everybody wants. There's everybody can find something that they like about the biofuels industry. I need you all to share your story with those staff members and your Congress members and senators. Thank you for that. And thank you for bringing up staff. I, on behalf of Growth Energy, I thank your staff for being so highly engaged with us, so responsive and, and so creative as we're talking about how to wrestle with these ideas. So with that, I just, I want to thank you for your time. You Stay bet. well, and we will talk to you, Growth Energy, again in early September. Thank you. All right. Emily, thanks for what you all do. Thanks for your support. Take care.